Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, Derek, I can hear you clearly, Dr. Derek. How are you? <laughs> outstanding, outstanding. Thanks so much for joining us today. <laughs> so, what can I tell you? Oh, first we're going we're gonna to start since by saying thank you to you for 50 years of making the Flower City bloom and the, everything you've done. And I think during this past year, if people didn't realize how essential the arts now are now, now they do. <laughs> yeah. So we want to thank you for your efforts and uh, helping people understand that that arts are now are truly essential and artists are truly essential workers. We're speaking with Garth Bacon here on Jazz 90.1 for Jazz Appreciation Month. And Garth, for you, let's go back to the very beginning growing up and uh, just the things you experienced that I encouraged you, influenced you to get into the field of dance. One more time, Derek. I was just going to say, can you take us to the very beginning growing up and uh, who were some of the people that influenced you to get into the world of dance? Yeah. Oh, 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 okay. Um, Alvin Ailey. Because um, when we did um, Dance Black America, we closed the intermission and Alvin had performed before I, his company had performed with him. Um, after I took my bow and I came off stage, waiting right there in the wings with tears in his eyes was Alvin Ailey hugging mm. me, telling me how proud he was of me. And that was like words from God, you know. Wow. Uh, and how much he loved the dance and that he wanted to dance for his company. And the company now does from before. Um, but that's amazing. I, I don't have any bad news about any of my mentors. They all kicked my butt and made <laughs> sure I did good and held me to high standards. But love and care was always there. Oh, a poet. Wow. So give me an idea of what Alvin Ailey was like, because we, we, he's such an iconic name in the world of the arts. But you knew him. What was he like? He, he what? You knew Alvin Ailey. Most people yes. know oh, his, oh, work, yeah. but you knew him personally. So what was he like? Yes. Oh, he was a warm, intelligent, super talented man. And whenever they performed as far away as Buffalo at Art Park, he'd come over here to have supper and, you know, hang out Jamaican style. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And um, his, his company is still <laughs> numero uno in the world. So, I mean, that's the high standards he set. And Judith Jamison took it over. And I choreographed the last dance she did, you know. Really? Uh, wow. Yes. Yeah. And um, we had an argument because I had her just walk on stage from upstage right to downstage left. And she said, that's how we're going to start it. I said, yes. <laughs> but I'm not doing anything. I said, I know. But they know what you can do and who you are. And they need some time to welcome you and applaud. Oh. Honey, when we did the dance, it's the same thing that happened. Everybody went crazy. Uh, and she's a wonderful person also. You know what, Garth? It's funny you should mention her because I had, a few years ago, I had lunch with her and I didn't even realize who, who she was. We were at an awards banquet. She's being awarded for a lifetime achievement for, uh, for the arts. And I was sitting right next to her eating. We're talking and just dining and having a good time. And all of a sudden, they called her name up. And she stood up like, oh, you are that, Judith Chambers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's one of the funniest moments. She said, oh, excuse me. And all of a sudden, I realized she, they called her name up. And she was like, <laughs> but you wouldn't know. But yeah, like I said, just completely unpretentious. You would never know until, until she's you right. Her name. And then, right. That's awesome. We're speaking with Garth Fagan. Garth, 
you've done so many great, amazing things while they're working with Winston Marcellus and his jazz project, or even Billy Bang a few years ago. That was actually 10 years ago with his project in the Vietnam War. What is it about the relationship between jazz and dance that are just inseparable? In your opinion? Yeah, well, um, Winton, you know, and his daddy, Ellis, was just a genius. His daddy was a genius, so Winton is still with us, and he's a genius too. But the two of them kicked my butt and nourished me. And um, <laughs> Billy Bang, same thing. And we had the most wonderful jazz arguments you can imagine, you know. Really? Yeah. And um, Winton and Miles had a little contretemps. And um, I was the peacemaker in that because witness from a different generation the miles and miles was right. performing and went and just went on stage to join him i remember that how his generation would do it and miles says no. what do you know which word four letters f are yeah. you doing up here you know yeah yeah and so i said hey chill brother chill chill you know, it's just two different generations. He gives you credit every chance he gets. So get it together. Mm. That's interesting. Speaking of Garth Fagan. Garth, that, that relationship, I guess, with jazz in, in your whole life, I mean, it's always been through your work, whether it was even with The Lion King or all the other amazing projects you've done. Why, is, what, why does jazz matter to you, Garth? Why is jazz important to you? Oh. Well, I grew up, and both of my parents loved jazz. So for my mother, if it wasn't religious music, it was jazz. And my dad, it was jazz, period. Hmm. So I grew up listening to it and hearing it and hear their ecstasy over it, you know. And... Uh, a saxophone solo or some would come on, oh, you know. <laughs> um, they, they understood that and felt that and adored it. Mm. And it passed on to me, thank God. Yeah. And uh, when I could buy my own tickets and get up and go, anybody who was playing, I was there. And if I didn't like it, I left. But um, most times, I loved it. Oh, man. I can't imagine growing up the time period. That you, so you came to Rochester, what, 1969, 1970? Yes. So I that's... 1970. But I was in Detroit 10 years before when I came from Jamaica. Right. So, um, and Detroit, you know, had uh, the Supremes and, uh, and, you know, Mayor Wells just passed. But right. I mean, a, a lot of music was in Detroit. And um, what was it like being uh, around all of that? Because you were, in, you were literally at the heart of the, the center of the world for music in the 1960s. Yeah. Not just soul music, but yeah, jazz going on the clubs, the dance scene, and you were there. You, you were a witness to it. There. What was that like to absorb all of these amazing things in Detroit in the 1960s? Well, it was very nourishing, you know, because everybody was into the arts and understood the arts. And um, Barry Gordy, you had to do the best you could. Every note you had to hit, and if yeah. you could on higher, he wanted it. And if it could be lower, he wanted it, you know. So um, it was that air all over the community. And because of the um, automobile industry, there were lots of middle class people of color. Mm. So they had a weekly, biweekly salary, you know. So right. uh, it was just a great place to spend your 20s in <laughs> from my estimation 
and right. they'd have um, concerts by the lake and whatever. And, and it was just amazing, totally amazing. And nourishing, nourishing. Sound, 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 perfect sound. Notes, 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 hit it. These yeah. days they sing everything in one note and one key and it just goes on and on and on and on. <laughs> but uh, um, there, everybody on each instrument could take a solo and each instrument could really carry on. Mm. We're speaking with Garth Fagan. So Garth, so we move here to Rochester, 1970 and you're at Brockport. Now, you, you, I didn't know this, but apparently... Um, Leslie Odom Jr. owes his life to you. What? Say that again. Uh, the actor and, and singer, Leslie Odom Jr. He said he owes his life to you. Oh, good. Good. <laughs> yeah. You know no. why he said that, right? Yeah. He's <laughs> quite talent. He is amazing talent. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Well, we didn't know that. I guess his parents met in your class. He was telling he, us a few years ago. He, he, I, Can you hear me okay, Garth? He, say that again. His parents met in your class. Prince. Leslie's parents. Oh, oh. They were students of yours. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. So they did. I taught everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so Leslie I, mentioned that he doesn't oh, like I, you because... It, his parents met in your and, class. And kids would um come into my class who weren't registered, but they wanted the nourishment. And I said, you can stay. That's okay. Good. <laughs> I love it. Speaking of Garth Fig, another thing that we really appreciate what you did, and I'm living proof of it, you used to bring your, your company to grade schools. Didn't matter where they went, but you always were, were very, very... I guess, um, strong in terms of bringing and advocating that your dance company could come to the schools. Why was that so important for you to bring your art and your artistry to school kids? Because the earlier they get, get it, the earlier they see it, the earlier they experience it. And my dancers are all, besides being fabulous dancers, they're fabulous people and they're well educated. And as we tour the world, I take them to every art gallery I can. Mm. Uh, so, 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 so they are educated and they can pass that on to the students. And they can see a student who's having a low day and bump them up, you know, and somebody who is a little bit too much pull them down, but nicely. You don't have to destroy. Right. And some teachers do that. They destroy people without pulling them down or putting them in perspective. Mm. Mm. Speaking of Garth Fagan. So that being said, Garth, so for you, what makes a good dancer or a good artist, in your opinion? What makes a dancer? For you, a good dancer for you. Because some people can and do it have the crap but yet can it can't connect to the audience but for you what makes what's a for you what makes a good dancer what um a, a great body you know flexibility courage to take risk when i say i want you to roll seven times and on count eight, I want you in the air, mm. in the beautiful, amazing shape you can imagine or do. And they do that, then that, those are my kind of dancers. They want to experience new and different things, but they know the basics and they know the rules. Uh, that's important to know that also so they don't injure themselves. I mean, you know, Steve Humphrey, Steve is a dragon, so Steve is about what now, 70, mm. the late 60s, early 70s. Right. 
and the brother looks like he's 50 and moves. <laughs> <laughs> like he's 40 and give thanks to God and his lovely wife, Mary Lee, <laughs> also nourishes him, you know. And right. she taught dance at School of the Arts too. So they're both dancers and educators. Mm. Mm. Speaking with Garth Fagan on Jazz 90.1. Garth, I, I can't thank you enough for the, the things you've done for us. Now, I remember many years ago, there was rumors and talk that you were thinking about putting together a um, a story about Miles Davis through dance. Uh -huh. Did anything ever have to come to that? I know there's, there's always, there's rumors and talk, but I didn't know if anything actually was there actual. I don't think it ever came to be. Uh, and I don't think it ever came to be. But the minute I am I'm on a plane to LA, just before we touch down, I think, oh good, I'm gonna see Miles in a little while. Yeah, nice. He's been gone qu quite a few years. Yeah. But I, I did a dance for him called Telling a Story. Um, and it was using all of his music and um, celebrating him and his brilliance. And you know the notes he would carve out of the atmosphere and then play it like, my God. Yeah. My, and um, when we premiered it, I think it was in New York and he came and he really loved it. So I, I can't complain. I cannot mm. complain. I mean, same way when I did a piece on Keith Jarrett, Keith King. Really? I didn't know that. Nice. The, um, at the perfect moment when only the composer would have known, he said, bravo. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean... Uh, those are, those are privileges and nourishments that you oh. get, you know. Yeah. yeah. What was the name of that piece you did for Keith Jarrett? Up Night, the Jarrett piece? Yes. Up Night and Melanin. Night and what? Up Night, Light, and Melanin. Okay. So, I you know. Up. I have to look that one up. I, not, I didn't know that. I, I never knew. You did, you are composed to his music called Untitled. Mm. And um, it, it, it was untitled because it was so complex and busy. It was one of those fabulous relationships people need and love, but the ones that question, question, question and celebrate, 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 and contradict, contradict. You know, the real vital relationship. Right. That, uh, your woman or your man or whatever yeah. can always pressure you into that point. Right. And right. it happens across the board. <laughs> Speaking with Garth Fagan here on Jazz 90.1. Is he's nourishing our souls for this past half century. Regard for folks, we, it's kind of an interesting thing that in this past year, a number of folks have discovered jazz for the first time, believe it or not. So we have a whole new world of folks who've just discovered Miles Davis, Dizzy Gillespie, Charlie Parker, Ella Fitzgerald, Billie Holiday. What advice would you give them for folks who are brand new to this world of jazz? Well, that list of names you gave, they're all stalwarts. You know, Billie Holiday, Strange Fruit, Jesus. I mean, <laughs> how can you sing that? I mean, <laughs> with the range that she did and the passion that she had, you know. But all of those artists that you named gave it to you every time you saw them. You rushed, you got babysitters, you got in the cab, you whatever you had to do to get there. And when you got there, 
they just threw nourishment at your ears, at your eyes, at your spirit, at your soul. I mm. mean, uh, anything you had to receive it with, you got it. Oh man, that's really that's that's beautiful. Speaking with Garth Bagan on Jazz ninety point one for our Jazz Appreciation Month drive. Garth, again, we can't thank you enough for taking care of us for this past fifty years here in the Flower City. You've made it bloom and. You've made, and again, we can't thank you enough for what you've done and what you're still doing. Ever so much. And I hope the jazz thing comes back as soon as this COVID thing gets calm, because that's such an exciting time in Rochester. When that, so, so, Derek, I at least got a chance to talk to you now and yeah. bless brother big huge blessings oh thank you every thank you so much Garth. again i'm here because of people like you coming to our schools back in the 80s and giving us and saving people who look like us and showing <laughs> us the way so we thank thank you so much thank you